Hello everybody. Um, I've been meaning to do a tutorial about what tools I use while I'm using Sketchbook Pro. Uh, the version I use is Sketchbook Pro 6, and you may have seen some of my figure painting videos. Now before I get into this figure painting, um, as a demonstration, I'm going to just show what tools I use. I already recorded the uh, painting aspect of it, but uh, to give you a heads up on uh, the tools I'm using, I'm just going to do a simple demonstration. Now I always tone the background so I'm not working straight on white so I can go darker or lighter. Then on a layer above I use the pencil tool and I'll, all I use is these default um, brushes that you see along the side here. And then I'll black. I like this crayon setup here. That's where I choose my main colors and then I'll use the Copic setup up here for the skin tones and other stuff up here. Now this is where I just use that simple pencil, and that's where I would sketch the figure, which um, you've probably seen me done before, and you'll see again in a few minutes once you watch the figure painting. But once I get the main figure down, so let's say I'll just do a simple shape here. Let me get rid of that layer. All right, let's say this was the figure. Yeah, real figurally like. But anyway, so let's say that that's the figure. You know, here's my sketch. What I will then do is, on a layer under it, um, I'll switch this fan brush here, and, that's, and off to the side I'll build a color palette out of um, what I want my skin tones to be. But actually, wait, whoops, silly me. First, I actually uh, do uh, some more shading based on the, it's not quite black and white, the shading for the background, it's re really based on the photo reference, which I'll put a link below where I get all my photo reference when I do figure work, uh, at least 99% of it. But it is slightly toned, so I'll change the color slightly. But it's, for the most part, it's pretty um, close to black and white. But I'll put something behind the figure just so I have some, some starting point. For the tonal range. And I do this before making my color palette for the figure itself. Darker in some areas, lighter. It really depends on where the flash is and the backdrop on the picture. They're almost all um, on a plain background, so it really just depends on where the flash lies, etc. But this is approximately for the one you're about to see. I mean, there. Now I'll look, flatten that down. Now I'll go and do the color palette so I can see it against the darker background. And I just do a basic spherical shape. And I would like to say there was some sort of rhyme and reason to where I, how I pick my colors, but there really is, isn't. Um, I just go by what looks right based on the color palettes on the uh, this Copic library up here, which is one of the improvements in Sketchbook Pro 6. I really like that. But if you want more in-depth color theory videos, there's a lot of them out there. I, I strongly recommend looking at them. This is definitely not one of them. This is more painting techniques than color theory. So once I get a uh, basic palette down, which you're going to watch me do it again once I do the, uh, once you start watching the actual figure painting portion of the video, then what I'll do is on another layer, that's where I'll start painting in the figure. And there, it, you know, it just depends on where everything's going, where the highlights are, where the shadows are, and I try and get the shadow side done first. And then I'll every so often turn off the sketch layer, see if I'm it's starting to read right. Then I obviously have went way out of line, so then I would go to the eraser tool. La, 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 la. Clean that up a bit. Now a lot of times when I'm doing an actual figure sketch, the sketch is, I mean, it's not a simple line like this is. So the sketch itself isn't very clean or neat because I'll start building up before it um, gets too neat. 
because I'm not doing a drawing, I'm not doing a line drawing, I'm doing a painting, so I just do the basic sketch, which you'll see in a few minutes. You know, and then as I work, I'll start lowering the opacity of the uh, sketch layer, and eventually I'll just get rid of it altogether once the figure layer reads correctly. And I'm still sticking, you still see me using this fan brush. So that's, I use that brush, I'll use this brush right here, um, which is just gives me a little tighter, um, but still very bristly looking, almost like a traditional media brush. Might as well give this some sort of form. There we go, now it's a butt. Case of lighting and so I'll keep refining it this way, changing the size of my brush, but this is the brush I'm using. It's right here. And I'll let me open up the brush settings. Mm -hmm. Let's see, show brush properties. Alright, so this is the brush properties you see on that particular brush. I didn't change anything. This is just I'm pretty sure this is the way it came by default. I might have set it up a while ago, I honestly don't remember. But that that's this brush that I'm using. Let me cancel that. The fan brush properties are, that's the properties on the brush, so you can see the settings right here. And then the only other thing I do is the same thing that I use for the sketch, um, is the pencil up here, and there's the settings on the pencil. And I try and get it as close to what a real pencil actually would feel like uh, as possible. And then as I'm working up my sketch, uh, when I start wanting to do more fine details, then I'll go on a another layer above, and let's say I wanted to work in the shadow of that butt crack right there. Then I go through and I will use the pencil tool to draw it in. Draw it in. And back to this brush. And pretty much, and that's how I work back and forth like that until I'm happy with the painting. And that's, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, that's the basic brushes I use. I don't really do anything fancy or complicated. Eventually, sometimes you might see me go down to one of these brushes for a, if I want to smooth something. Oh, whoops, I got merge it in. Um, if I want to smooth something out, I might use one of these smudge brushes. I do use those occasionally. Uh, I, don't, I don't think for the painting you're about to watch, I really used it for anything up until the end when I was working on the background to smooth out the background uh, shading. Uh, so I think that's about it. Uh, enjoy the painting you're about to watch. Uh, it sped up a lot. I think the painting itself took about an hour and a half, and I, I shrunk it down to about 10 minutes. All right, uh, thank you for watching, and please uh, subscribe. And click the thumbs up if you liked it, share it with your friends. All right, thank you.